Welcome everyone to the first uh, Open Data Day uh, here at the city of Portland. Uh, we are celebrating the uh, transparency in the city and the, how we manage data in this uh, digital age, uh, thinking about what digital justice means and the service that we provide to the city as a whole. Uh, we are going to start this morning with a presentation uh, from Angela Bodel and Douglas Imaralu from the City Budget Office. Uh, this presentation will show how to leverage open data and build effective performance management in city bureaus. Angela and Douglas are financial analysts in the City Budget Office. And in addition to doing all the budget analysis, both co-lead. Uh, the citywide performance management program. With that presentation, uh, please, Angela Douglas. Yeah, thank you, uh, Hector. Um, so today we'll be talking about data strategy and decision making and um, how that sort of, how we can use that in performance management to um, improve outcomes. I'll be talking a little bit about performance management, what it is, um, why we do performance management, uh, how to do performance management and what the process sort of looks like. Uh, while Angela will go into open data and the benefits in the context of performance management and we'll leave you all with some tips on how to um, sort of fuse performance management with um, open data. Change slide. So in thinking about performance management, uh, one way to think about performance management is to see it as the art and science of inquiry informed by data. So performance management can be seen uh, as um, promoting the culture of inquiry that's informed by data uh, because it gets at how we use data extracted from performance measures to improve systems, processes, and programs. Ideally, this ought to be a continuous process. I mean, performance management ought to be a continuous profit process. And by that, I mean, um, it is not a checkbox and it's not one-off. Rather, it ought to be uh, a system that is approached um, by setting sp specific or programmatic goals in case of the city, uh, which are aligned to the strategic goals of an organization, um, developing performance measures to track, review, and assess progress, and developing the knowledge, skills, and abilities of communities and staff through lessons learned from um, performance management. But we must acknowledge that this is an ideal situation. Ideally, that's what it ought to be. Uh, but we are still working on it as a city. So for example, the city of Portland has continued to invest in capacity building for performance management purposes. Bureaus are developing goals that align with city priorities, identifying existing data that can be used to improve services and investing in new systems and also hiring analysts amongst others. So this all is good news uh, because organizations with strong data management and analytics, analytics culture generate insights from performance data to improve their systems processes and ultimately programs. So I'll talk a little bit now about why we do performance management. So performance management is all about promoting a culture of inquiry, like I said before. Um, in terms of why we do it, I believe strongly that understanding why we do things is often a motivation to go beyond the average. As mentioned earlier, we do performance management for the sake of, I alluded to that earlier, rather. Um, we do performance management for the sake of accountability to the communities that we serve and uh, continuous improvement, that is to solve problems, to adapt to change and to anticipate uh, future circumstances. After all, what cannot be measured cannot be managed. So again, ideally, uh, performance management should move beyond just measurement, that is collecting data, reporting and analysis to problem solving. Insights from performance management from a performance management system should inform decision making. That way we can move from performance measurement, you know, for measurement's sake, to performance management for accountability and continuous improvement. When we focus more on this approach, uh, when we focus more on the lessons learned from performance management, when we focus more on the lessons learned from our interventions and the impact of our work on the communities that we serve, then the approach, um, then we start to approach uh, performance management more strategically. This is important because the impact of our work could be negative or positive, and either way, we must build a culture of learning about such impact to improve processes, programs, systems, and interactions with the communities that we serve. So I'll talk a little bit now about um, how to. So what you can see on the screen is um, an illustration that we created to show how uh, data strategy and decision making fit together in the context of performance management. So in thinking about um, how to do performance management well, 
one, we need to have a well-developed data system in place. Also, we need to be able to collect and manage data for consistency and accuracy. If you look at the middle part of that illustration, you see um, five steps where we need to understand how to manage data. So it's not just, just about collecting data or analyzing data. There's the visualization part and there's the communication part. Also, we need to have a skill, the skills and capacity to glean insights from the data, communicate those insights to diverse audiences uh, as when due. As you can see within the performance management uh, context, data analysis is critical. So you can think about it this way. You can do all the best analysis in the world, but if you do not have um, what you're trying to accomplish, if that's not clearly stated, uh, and that's, if, that's not, if that does not necessarily incorporate the analysis into decision-making, then uh, it doesn't really change the outcomes. Basically, you need to have a clear roadmap and incorporate your analysis into decision-making for you to meet the outcomes that you so desire. On top of all that actually is uh, good old you know, leadership buying and uh, the need to invest in capacity to navigate change. I'm sure you agree with me that using data and evidence in operational and strategic decision-making uh, is a break from traditional approaches. And as with implementing change in any um, organization, there will be um, some kind of conflict. So we need to sort of invest uh, in you know, implementing this new change and this new approach of doing things. So now I'll talk a little bit about uh, what the process looks like ideally, and I'll hand it over to Angela to um, give us more information on open data in the context of performance management. So ideally, once you have the ingredients of you know, data strategy and decision making, um, the process to follow in performance management becomes uh, really um, sort of straightforward. First, you have to set a goal, as you can see on, on the uh, illustration on the screen, set a goal um, and gather relevant data uh, you know, that you can analyze. You know? So the goal sort of defines what kind of data you should be looking for. Uh, then based on the insights that's uh, from the data that you have gathered and analyzed, um, operations are adjusted to make the best use of resources. Then data is collected, analyzed compared to previous, the previous period uh, so that the impact of the adjustment can be described and tweaks can be made to continually improve. Overall, um, if you follow this process, as you can see on the screen, um, at the stage where we have tracking results, when we do not see the kind of outcomes that we need, we can add more data, update the analysis, move back to adjusting operations uh, according to evidence, then track the results again. Overall, performance management is about you know, stepping aside and being deliberately re reflective. Um, and as I said before at the beginning, uh, it's all about promoting a culture of inquiry that is informed by data. At this point, I'll pass it on to, Jen, uh, to Angela to talk more about uh, open data and uh, the, in, in the performance management context. Thanks, Douglas. Um, slide is not advancing. There we go. <laughs> All right. So um, building on that sort of overview and foundation that Douglas talked about, about what is performance management, since this is open data day, we wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits and opportunities we see around open data for this work of performance management. Um, and there are quite a few of them. So the first benefit um, we see is that open data presents an opportunity to create a more frequent feedback loop between our goals and our outcomes. Um, so right now, our current system, um, we basically are reporting citywide performance data at one single point throughout the year. But with open data, there's opportunities for more frequent reporting. Um, and so that's also an opportunity for more regular communication of our results to our decision makers and the public. Um, so basically, you know, going through that yellow uh, arrow diagram that Douglas just talked about kind of more often and having more opportunities to communicate about that. Related to the first benefit, the second one um, is that open data creates the opportunity for sharing performance data in real time, or at least closer to real time. So we know that city bureaus are increasingly able to use technology uh, to collect more data and uh, inform more real-time operational adjustments as they're looking at that data. Um, but again, on a citywide level, we have this secondary reporting system for performance, um, and it doesn't allow for sharing data that frequently. Um, and so we see open data as a real opportunity to help with this and get more data out there um, more frequently to help um, 
inform our decision making and our adjustments. The third benefit uh, we see is that open data offers an opportunity to elevate the visibility of performance data. So uh, right now, you know, across the city, we have more than 500 performance measures that bureaus are tracking and reporting um, to the centralized performance management city system. Um, but a lot of people don't know that that performance data is out there or in, aren't sure where to find it, um, aren't sure how to use it. And so um, open data collects that data in a single place. And it also offers the ability to build stories around that data and add additional context. So it's not just a number, you can, um, you can put that number in context of what it really means. And so um, we see that as um, a benefit for helping community members and city council find that data and use it more easily. A fourth benefit um, we see is the ability to share data in a more disaggregated form. Um, so currently our performance reporting system is mainly of aggregate data points. Um, we're working to change that, but um, it's challenging, um, as I mentioned, in our secondary reporting system. So um, in addition to real-time data, open data offers the opportunity for sharing disaggregated data, um, which gives us much more information in general and particularly around the city's work on our equity goals. Um, the ability to push entire data sets instead of just a single data point onto the open data site um, really creates a lot more opportunities for what we can do with the data. A fourth or a less track fifth benefit uh, of open data is that this open data portal can hold the possibility of improving the validity, reliability, and quality of our performance data. So as data sets go through the data intake pipeline to get onto the open data site, each data set um, goes through a set of checks for completeness, privacy, validity, et cetera. And this is standard across the city. So that's not something that we have currently um, in place aside from the open data site. And finally, um, a sixth benefit is that open data can facilitate data sharing um, across city bureaus as well as with the public. So I think often when people think about open data, what they're thinking about is sharing data with the community, which is really important, but um, it's also a really helpful way to be able to share data across our internal city silos um, and help other bureaus know what data is available um, that their colleagues and other bureaus might have that, that might be relevant to their work. Uh, all right, so ultimately all of these benefits that I talked about, um, I think help us tell better stories. When I think about performance management, um, I, I often think about it as connected to storytelling. And um, it's never about just taking a data point on its own and using just that number to make a decision. Um, as you saw in the earlier kind of parenthesis diagram with the data embedded in it, um, there's always a lot of context and nuance that goes with the data to help understand what it means. And, and the people who are doing the work day to day know that context and nuance best. Um, so data is one tool that can help us describe what we're seeing um, in our work, whether it's reinforcing the urgency of a problem we need to solve or communicating about the exciting benefits and possibility of a solution that we're trying, to, that we're trying out. Um, and so all of those benefits of open data having more real-time information, having more disaggregated information, sharing data across silos can help make this storytelling even more powerful. So one example of what I mean by this, um, here's just a snapshot from our current open data portal. Um, and this is data from uh, Portland Bureau of Transportation. So this data is showing the concentration of alcohol serving establishments linked to DUI stops. So that's what the data itself is. Um, but this on the open data portal, they've been able to put this data into context and pair it with this narrative that you see on the left side, which is explaining what's happening with the data and why it's important. So the narrative is linking the data to the Bureau's strategy, to a plan, the Vision Zero plan, um, and it's talking about the steps the Bureau is taking to improve these outcomes. So this is kind of a real life example of what that parenthesis diagram looks like in practice, I think, because it's taking the data that it's in the middle and it's putting those parentheses of strategy and decision-making and, and action steps around it. Um, so this is a great example of what we're thinking about when we think of um, the benefits of open data for performance management. 
So I'm going to wrap up here. Um, hoping we have maybe a couple minutes left for questions, but um, we'll just leave you with a couple of tips that summarize what we've talked about um, and sort of our advice on effectively using performance, performance management to improve outcomes in the work we do. So our first tip is to create a data strategy that is aligned with your goals and that feeds into your decision-making processes. So thinking about that parenthetical diagram, you know, having all of those ingredients, the strategy, the decision-making process, and the data put together. Uh, second tip, develop a suite of measures that help you know how much you did, how well you did it, and who is better off. So data about all of those questions to help you move from data measurement to really doing um, performance management. And then finally, use your data to tell the story of your work um, and to improve where necessary. Um, and this is where we really see open data um, offering a lot of possibilities for this work. Uh, and with that, we will open it up for any questions. Thank you, Angela Douglas, for this presentation. Uh, for those who are going to be watching this uh, online after the, present the live presentation, please send your questions to through our uh, website, smartcitypdx.com, uh, through the contact link there. And thank you uh, for uh, having this presentation.